What's going on folks? My name is Chris and in this video I'm going to respond to a viewer's email about trading. Something I don't do very often, which is respond to viewers' emails in a video. But this guy is getting a video to himself. So good for you, bro. You really nailed that email. <laughs> um, in case you guys don't know me, my name is Chris and I own this channel here. I do a lot of software tutorials. I help traders accomplish problems, solve problems related to software and things like that. So let's get on with it right now so this guy says first thank you for all the knowledge you shared on youtube it helped me let me introduce myself my name is and i live in germany i'm very new to the world of trading i wanted to let you know that i took the liberty to contact you because i believe you better understand the problem i'm having thank you very much that's fair to say makes sense you know you are reaching out to somebody who's got um a lot of views and a lot of positive comments on the videos of those where those views are so you know it makes sense that you think that i have some kind of credibility because i do the guy continues to say i use interactive brokers with a very minimal balance of five thousand euros i've also lost 20 percent of my assets i'm so frustrated i hope you will help me so i want to just fully say that i'm not an investment advisor none of the things that i'm about to say here is investment advice or trading advice or any kind of financial advice i'm just giving you a man-to-man -man talk about what I think about your email and potentially some ideas that you could implement. So he says, I just found out that interactive brokers will deduct the balance for commissions when we buy or sell. And of course it's a slippage, which is why I want to ask the following questions. So then he goes on and asks things like this. What kind of stocks are safer for beginners? How much stock should be bought or sold? What strategy will win for a smaller player like me? Or are there any tips that can minimize slippage? Okay, so what I can tell by reading your email, bro, is that you really have a lot to learn. You've probably just started trading. Like he says, I'm very new to the world of trading and you just haven't done enough research yet into the world of trading to really begin to make any good decisions or any decisions for that matter that are worth making. What I imagine you as is you've taken a flight to a very foreign place. You're all on your own in a jungle of animals that have lived there for years and they know very well what their environment's about you are still learning the environment you do not know what you're doing you do not know anything about the environment you're in and you just jumped right in and there's nothing wrong with that in fact i commend that you've taken the decision to to take risk you are living life more than probably a large percentage of people in this world even are because a lot of people in this world are even too scared to take a risk so i commend you for that everything else here now i'm gonna i'm gonna segue here into something else which is i believe that there is an issue with you sending me this and i'm gonna clear that issue up right now so you're asking these types of questions like what kind of stock is safer what kind of stock should be bought or sold these types of questions honestly bro you could probably get a decent answer asking chat gpt these types of very general questions now obviously you shouldn't take everything it says you know face value like don't just believe everything it says and just go out and do it and start trading based on chat gpt's advice but if you need very general information about something you have a good chance asking an ai bot okay you're asking a human being with experience in this realm you're going to get a very most probably complicated and convoluted answer from asking an individual this because you know people that have experience in an industry First of all, you don't know if that person can actually accurately communicate their knowledge. You're lucky that I kind of can. And then the second thing is, is that the kind of crap that that person's been through, first of all, they might not even want to answer your message. And then part two of two is that when they answer you, they're going to give you a response that you probably won't even be able to understand. You're going to take little bits and pieces out of, out of the response and be like, yeah, I agree with that. Uh, I don't know what he meant by that. And then at the end of the day, you're going to feel smarter. But actually, it's just euphoria in your brain convincing you that you feel a little bit smarter. But in reality, you didn't learn anything because the guy probably couldn't communicate it or it just was way over your head because the guy's on a completely different level. You know what I'm saying? That's why I'm saying there's no shame in asking an AI bot these questions, bro. Literally, go ask ChatGPT what kind of stock it thinks is safer for beginners. Now, I'm going to answer the question, too, at some point in the video. I'm just giving you some general ideas here about how you can go about this and how you can navigate the current online realm. Get into the habit of doing a Google search, learning how to prompt an AI bot. Prompting an AI bot is basically how to ask it a question and then how to follow up with a clarification question. Oh, actually... I wanted a little bit more of this and a little bit less of that. Thank you. And then it goes on to give you more information. You know what I'm saying? 
So, dude, you need to learn how to do Google searches, bro. Like, big time. Now, I'm going to focus on one part of your message here, which is where you said, I have a very minimal balance, and I've also lost 20% of my assets. I'm so frustrated. Welcome to trading, okay? You have entered in to the modern Colosseum, my friend. You have to be expecting that you're going to get cut. You're going to bleed. You're going to lose. You're going to win. You're going to experience all kinds of emotions. That's why I like to equate trading to like the modern Colosseum because you're experiencing like a whole myriad of emotions. And there's a saying from a very high stake sports betting guy that I listen to that if you're not experiencing the whole myriad of emotions in a 24 hour period, you're not really living life as much as someone who is. Now, of course, take that with a grain of salt or take it with whatever you want. But I believe it's true. You know, people who sit in a sedentary location all day and they're bound to a job and they're too scared to even go out and take a risk. You know, like I said, most people are too scared to even go out and take a risk because they've been so conditioned by the current society. Necessity is the mother of all innovation, meaning that if they didn't have to go out and take a risk, they will not do it. That's why most people don't freaking do it. But the people that are so freaking fed up with their current situation that they actually decide to go out and jump into the pit of sharks like you over here emailing me about i've lost 20 percent of my assets i'm frustrated good that's my response to you good it's excellent that you've lost 20 percent of your assets and you should expect to lose a lot more in your grand journey and i am saying that you should expect to lose your money and fail multiple times and also succeed multiple times in your journey because that's what it takes my friend that's what it takes to learn You've lost money. You have gained something out of that. You've gained something that, like I said, most people will never even experience because they're too scared to leave their fucking nine to five. The next thing I'm going to talk about here is a typical beginner tendency. And this is why I think there's typically a big disconnect between beginner traders and experienced traders. When, when beginner traders ask experienced traders for advice, they normally ask them very general questions and very technical questions that are specific to something technical about what they're doing. What they don't realize at first is that those small questions that they're asking have a very little impact on the end result that they're trying to achieve. And they may not even know what they're trying to achieve, which is actually normal. Normally, when you plan out to do something, you start by doing it. By the time you're done, you've done something completely different that you didn't even expect or believe was possible at the time where you were planning it. You know what I'm saying? You know, right now he's asking questions like how much stock should be bought or sold or what strategy should win, will win. But what you have to understand, when it comes to winning, you're going to lose. And that's probably what you're not expecting to hear. What I'm viewing in your message is, you're looking for what strategy will win for a small player like me. At the same time, you're saying, I'm frustrated, I've lost 20% of my assets. This right here is so normal. And it's actually very inspiring to me because I'm, I've am i witnessed this pattern in myself and in other traders multiple, multiple times over, over the period of my trading career so far. And there's no going around this. You're going to get frustrated. You're going to experience crazy emotions and you will not find one strategy that constantly wins all the time because you're involved in a risk activity. You're gambling. You're playing a game of chance. Okay. There can be strategies that win, but all strategies that win also lose. You're going to experience loss and emotions and cycles where you're on a big hot streak, potentially the biggest winning streak of your entire trading career. After multiple years of trading, you're going on a crazy streak. Potentially you'll never even repeat that ever again. But you don't know that you'll never repeat that again because you don't have enough experience yet. In fact, a lot of what you're talking about here tells me that you really have no idea what's possible in the trading industry. You're really strongly underestimating or overestimating certain things. And I'm trying to give you a bit of the reality pill here. So his first question is what kind of stock is safer for beginners? Keyword safer. Second keyword beginners. Now there's always two ways to answer a question. There's the devil's advocate way. And then there's the logical way. I like to do both. The logical way for me would be safer generally correlates to lower volatility, meaning that it does not move around as much as stocks uh, that do move around a lot. So an example of a lower volatility stock would be a stock that doesn't move around a lot during the day. 
So in any period, it might only move around a couple of cents at a time. That's an example of something that would be safer in the way you put it or lower volatility. Now, something with higher volatility might be a particular stock that has a wide spread between the bid and offer, maybe 10 to 20 cents or more. So the stock has less people willing to buy it and sell it at any given time. And there's less volume being traded on that stock potentially. So that actually makes it more risky because there's a higher chance that you can get stuck trading the stock because there's not going to be other traders to buy it off of you when it's time to sell it. So that's how I would logically answer your question, which is what kind of stock is safer for beginners? Basically, it's stocks that have more volume and more traders willing to buy and sell the stock. Now, the opposite side to this question, I'm going to say to you that just because a stock is theoretically safer, it doesn't mean that it's better to trade. And there is a general recommendation that I would make to beginners is that before you trade any stock, you should get a feel for how much it moves by trading it in a demo account or paper trading environment first. And uh, normally when you're first starting out trading, you don't even consider the idea of a demo account. It's like, whoa, whoa what's a demo account? Why would I trade fake money? I want to trade real money. I want to make money, right? But when you get into a little bit more, you understand the purpose of a demo account. So that's something that I would like you to research about, which is a demo account. Learn how to trade stocks in a demo account first, get a feel for how they move, get a feel for your order placement, buying the stock, selling the stock, and uh, you know, getting a feel for buying 100 shares or how many shares you want of the stock. And then look at you know how much it's impacting your profit and loss. That's just basic things that you need to learn first. And, you know, once you get past that, then comes the real game, um, you know. And so when you say safer, what I'm trying to say to you is that you really don't really want to be looking for stocks that are safer because one way of looking at it is because stocks that are safer don't have a lot of opportunity in them for certain types of trading strategies. Stocks that are considered more risky, more volatile, there typically is more price inefficiencies. Take that word, price inefficiency. Go and research it. Ask ChatGPT, what is a price inefficiency? How to capture a price inefficiency? And you will begin to understand what I mean is that when you're looking at safer stocks or markets that have so many bids and so many offers and it takes so much trading for the market to even move by one cent or two cents, you'll begin to understand my point of view, which is that safer is not better. The second thing is number two, how much stock should be bought or sold? This is entirely relative to your own risk tolerance, number one. And number two, if there's any kind of minimum trading quantity for that particular stock. Because for some markets, and I'm going to get a little technical on this number two here. So there's a minimum quote quantity for stocks, which is typically 100 shares. So which means that if you put in an order for less than 100 shares, your order is considered an odd lot order, meaning that it gets lower priority on the order book. This may not matter to you if you're trading with a longer time frame. You're willing to accept uh, a wider range of prices. Now, his question was how much stock should be bought or sold? In reality, it's relative to your risk tolerance. How much are you willing to lose on this trade? How much are you putting up on this trade, basically? So if you buy 100 shares of a stock for every cent the stock moves, every penny, you will be making or losing one US dollar, assuming that it's a USD stock, okay? Now, um, let's say I'm looking at this chart and I'm saying I think it's going to go to 234 and 25 cents before it goes down to 232.78 again. What I'm saying is that I think it's more likely to go up to a certain price here, the price I just said, than it is to go down. So what I will do is I will buy it right now put a potential target up at my target price of 234.25, put a stop loss down at 232.78, and how many shares to buy or sell is relative to how much risk I'm willing to take on this trade. So what I will do is measure the amount from my entry price. Let's say it's 233.90, 233.90 down to 232.90. That's a whole dollar, so 100 cents, plus another 20 cents, let's say, or about, 12 cents. So let's say I'm risking a dollar and 12 cents on the stock. If you bought 100 shares, you would be risking $112 on this trade. 
assuming my entry is kind of close to where the price is and my stop loss is right on this low right here, 232.78. If I wanted to risk less, I would trade less shares. If I traded 50 shares, you can cut that number in half. And the good thing about that is that some trading softwares will calculate that for you automatically when you trade. If you put your entry here and your stop loss here, it'll automatically tell you based on your share size how much you will be losing if the stock goes to your stop loss price. Another thing that I might piggyback on this is that, you know, you might hear all kinds of arbitrary rules online about, yeah, you have to risk 1% of your account, 2% of your account. Some traders will say, if you're really confident on a trade, you can risk 5% or more of your account. Honestly, I'm not gonna give you any advice about that. But what I will say is that in order to make money, you have to risk money. If you wanna make some big money, if you wanna place a big bet, you have to risk big money. That's how it works. There's no way around that. And when you take your risk, my friend, when you take big risks, you're going to experience your emotions again. You're going to feel frustrated when you lose. You're going to feel angry. You're going to feel extremely enlightened and happy when you win on a trade. Um, you're going to experience all kinds of emotions, fear, greed, euphoria, uh, anger, frustration. Um, I don't know, man. Every single emotion. Ask ChatGPT, list of all possible emotions. You're going to feel every single one of them when you're trading. There's no way around that. Even if you have some kind of an automated system. Oh, I want to program my strategy into this thing that it does it all automatically for me. Yeah. Welcome to fairy tale land, my friend. You're not going to get rid of the friggin' emotions, no matter how automated you are. What you can reduce is user error, which is very good. And I think that that's one of the main benefits for using algorithmic trading, reducing the user error. But you will not remove the emotions. The bigger you bet, the more emotions you're going to experience. The more you progress as a trader, the more risk you're going to be comfortable taking, the more emotions you're going to have to work through and resolve and experience. And that's what it is, my friends. Question number three, what strategy will win for a small player like me? So all strategies will win sometimes and all strategies will lose sometimes. What you want to find is a strategy that makes more money than it loses. This right here is what every single freaking trader is looking for at all times in the markets. Some traders have proven back-tested strategies with data proving that the strategy is profitable over thousands of trades, and they're still not fully confident to put on the bets that they want to put on. Why? Because they're losing. Let's say you're on a losing streak, five trades in a row, but your strategy is statistically profitable. You're still feeling fearful. You're feeling frustrated, and angry, all that stuff. Okay. All strategies will lose sometimes. The biggest gambling companies in the world, the casinos, basically, they lose. People walk into those casinos and they count the fucking blackjack cards and then they walk out with a quarter million dollars or whatever and then the casino just lost that, right? They lose. You will lose. Losing is essential. Get comfortable with it. Best loser wins. There's a book called that. I never read it, but I want to. Basically, what I'm trying to get across here is that you have to learn what it is to involve yourself in a gambling business, how to run a casino, how do casinos operate, right? If you have any friends who trade, who've traded for a long period of time, if you know anybody who run casinos, if you know anybody who does sports betting, you want to be talking to these people because these people have experience in what you're trying to do, my friend. Okay. Number four, good question. Are there any tips and tricks that can minimize slippage? I'm going to give you my response to this, which would be, if you can use limit orders. So if you're trading a stock that's bid at a dollar and offered at a dollar 20, you're going to pay a dollar 20 for that stock. If you use a market order, if you use a limit order, you can join the bid at a dollar or you can try to improve the bid. You can say, you know what? I will bid a dollar and five cents because you're willing to be a little bit more aggressive. So with a limit order, you're bidding for the stock when you want to buy it and you're offering the stock when you want to sell it. Let's say I want to offer my stock at $2. I will put a limit sell order at $2. And now I'm looking at the market. I'm reassessing my decision. I'm seeing what's happening and all that. I'm seeing that other market participants are adjusting and all that. Now I want to decide that actually I want to pull out my offer. I don't want to be offered at $2 anymore because I think the market's going to go at $3 or $2.50. So I'm going to pull out my offer, see where it goes, and then I might put it back. I use limit orders most of the time in my trading. A lot of professional traders prefer to use limit orders because it gives them more precision about what prices they select in their trading. So oftentimes you can see traders using the mouse pointing and clicking on the exact price on the ladder that they want to trade at. 
So sometimes they might not get the order fill using the limit order because the market has to actually go down to your price for a buy order and someone has to sell into the bid for you to buy on the limit. Now, it depends on the market too because in some markets you can get away with using a market order. If the spread is very tight, if you're trading futures where the spread is very tight and you're running a long term strategy where, you know, if you just bought it and you're willing to buy a lot more and you can see that there's an offer of, you know, a thousand and you want to buy a thousand mark it in and buy a thousand, you know, in some market conditions and in some markets, you can get away with using a market order. Uh, because the price difference between the bid and the offer is very tight. That's one reason. The second thing is you might be running a longer term strategy. As long as the bid offer spread is tight enough and you're not going to be overpaying for something, then it's pretty much fine to use a market order. If you'd ask me, normally I'm still going to use a limit order most of the time. If I want to be aggressive, I'll just put the limit order on the offer for a buy and I'll sell into the bid with a limit order if I want to sell aggressively. Now, when it comes to exiting a trade, if you're day trading, you should be using a stop order. So you have to familiarize yourself with different trading order types and seeing which ones give you different advantages. That's pretty much how you minimize slippage using limit orders. All right, dude, I hope I answered some of your questions. And if you have any others, feel free to let me know. I don't know if you'll get a second video, but I just wanted to show people out there, you know, what I think of these types of beginner questions and how I would answer them. Let me know what you thought of it, dude. And remember, if you're not feeling the emotions, dude, what are you even feeling? Thank you. Cheers. Take care.